Welcome to the server segment of building a multi-tiered cloud application. In this segment, we will deploy six servers across the three cloud networks we have created previously. To save time, we will use server images that have already been patched, configured, and had our demonstration application installed. We will also review the available system images that you may choose to deploy to your cloud as well. Additionally, we will show you how to modify the CPU, memory, and add local storage on a server. Server deployment typically takes 5 to 10 minutes per server, depending on the operating system and the cloud usage at the time of deployment. During the course of this segment, we will edit out this deployment time. We have already logged into the Dimension Data Cloud Management GUI, and the first thing we do is click on Clouds to view our cloud environment. Here we see the three cloud networks that we have created in the network segment. Clicking on the network name shows the servers that have been deployed to that network. In this case, no servers have been deployed yet, so let's start. On the right, there are two containers. The container labeled OS images holds standard images available for deployment. We'll review those in just a minute. Above it, there's a container labeled customer images, which are those that have either been imported or cloned from other servers. For this demonstration, we will deploy from the customer images server list. We have previously set up three images, one for each type of server we will deploy into our application. We'll start with our front-end web image and deploy to the web network. Click on the image and a dialog box will appear. We enter a server name, an optional description, and then select the cloud network we wish to deploy our server into. Then we have the option to deploy the server or deploy and start. We'll choose Deploy and Start so that the server will start running as soon as it's deployed. We can now see under Cloud Network that a server is being deployed, and the bar over the server displays the deployment status. We will now repeat this deployment process for the next five servers, adding one more web server, then deploy the application image to our application network, and finally, the database image to our database network. While the cloud is deploying our servers, Let's take a quick look at some of the stock images in the OS Images container. Dimension Data supports several distributions of Linux as well as Microsoft Windows servers. Scrolling down the image list shows the various configurations and deployments. At the time of this recording, we offer Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5.5, 32 and 64 bit, CentOS 5.5, 32 and 64 bit, and Ubuntu 8, 64 bit. Windows Server 2003 and 2008 images are available in 32 and 64-bit packages. Based on client demand and distribution updates, we will add new images from time to time. Now that deployment has completed, let's take a brief look at the options available to modify our servers. Pick the network container that holds the server that is to be modified. Then click on the server to bring up its Manage Server dialog box. Several options are available as blue links in the box. We can edit the server name and description, we can edit the server specs, and we can add local storage. Let's take a quick look at the server specs. When a server is deployed, it has a pre-configured CPU and memory configuration. After deployment, you can modify these settings, adding and removing CPU and RAM whenever necessary. There are up to 8 CPUs per server, and up to 64 gigabytes of memory. Once the server specs are to our liking, we click Submit and get a verification warning noting that the server will be restarted due to this change. Click on OK to accept or Cancel to abort the change. We'll click on OK, and we get a message indicating that the modification is occurring. Click Close, and we can see in the server list the status of the modification. As you've just seen, modification of CPU and memory settings will initiate an automatic reboot of the server. Adding storage volumes, which we'll learn to do in just a moment, will not initiate a reboot. And the changes will not be made until the server is rebooted and the disk management tools for the given operating system have been used to prepare the new disk space. Best practices dictate that these modifications should only be performed during a maintenance window based on the policies of your organization. The change we've just made will take several minutes, so we'll skip ahead to the point where the changes have been completed. 
Adding local storage is a similar process. Back on the Manage Server dialog box, click on Add Local Storage, and then choose the amount of storage you wish to add. You may choose from 10 to 250 gigabytes of disk, and may add up to a total of 2.5 terabytes of storage to a server in 250 gigabyte volumes. Once the size has been chosen, click on Submit and confirm the server modification in the pop-up box by clicking OK. We get a confirmation of the change and then go back to the network container where the service status shows that it is being modified. Again, this takes several minutes to complete and will require a reboot before the volume is available for use. Through the use of these features, we can create servers and modify them to meet the needs of the application being deployed. We can scale memory and CPU at any point during the server's lifetime should more resources be required. Lastly, let's take another look at the Manage Server dialog and review the function buttons at the bottom of the box. Start is fairly self-explanatory. Pressing this will start a server that is not currently running. Shutdown will send a shutdown command to the server that is currently running. This will stop the server by initiating a graceful shutdown. Restart will also send a graceful shutdown and startup command to the server. Power off is the hard stop function and will simply turn off the server. This is a last resort way to bring back a server that has stopped responding or otherwise had an operating system panic. The two remaining commands allow us to clone the server or delete the server. Delete is a one-way operation. Once a server has been deleted, there is no getting it back. Cloning is a great feature of the Dimension Data Cloud. This is how we created the customer images that we use to deploy this demonstration. When building up a server environment, you typically need to deploy the server, patch the server, install any custom packages that you want on it, then repeat for any additional servers you're going to deploy. Cloning your original server is a quick way to build new servers and an efficient way to maintain consistency between those servers. To clone a server you've deployed, simply click on Clone, then give the image a name and description and click Submit. It will take approximately 10 to 20 minutes for the clone to complete and the image status will appear in the customer image container over the server image. Once cloned, the image will be available in the customer image container for future deployments. In this segment, we've seen how to deploy servers from the image containers. We've also looked at how to modify CPU, memory, and local storage on the servers. Finally, we learned how to manage the operation of servers from the management GUI, as well as taking a brief look at cloning servers to help enable future server deployments. This concludes the server segment of Building a Multi-Tiered Cloud Application.